What's going on, people? My name's Timmy Joe, making videos and stuff and things. So I got a big box, and it's uh, it's fun because, uh, as you can tell by the tape on it, MSI contacted me. They wanted to do a video together, and they wanted me to build a whole giant computer with some incredible parts. And I said, heck yes, yeah, finally, finally. So I got a big old box of stuff here. There's still a case that's on its way, but I wanted to open this up because it's a bunch of exciting stuff in here. So let's go ahead and we'll get started on that. It's like Christmas, Nintendo 64. Ooh, I see a bunch of cool stuff in here. We have uh, the best MSI motherboard I've ever played with, that's for sure. It's the MSI Meg Ace. Look at it, it's got a hologram on it. Oh, I see something. Finally, thanks MSI, my kid will love that. Oh, 5700, it's the Mech graphics card. Cool, OC edition, we'll have to check this out and see how good she fares out. We have uh, Ryzen thir uh, yeah, 3700X, a core processor. There's gotta be some RAM in here, right? Dominator Platinum RGB, 32 gigs. This is insane. What else is in here? Oh, shut up. Look at that. This is a PCI E Gen 4 M.2 SSD NVMe. I gotta look at this right now. Oh my God, I wonder how much this is. What else we got in here? Oh, here, we'll put this up. There we go. We got the Master Liquid ML 240R RGB. That is super cool. To cap it all off, a nice modular power supply from Kuda Master as well. So, my goodness, this is some this is some treats. Last but not least, showed up a few days later. This is by far the biggest case I've ever played with. This is the MSI MPG Secura. 500G. It is an amazingly beautiful, gigantic computer case. I'll even do the whole peely sticky thing. Woo! There we go. This is a new series that I think showed up at Computex for uh, MSI. They're, they're just launching and this is beautiful. We're going to do a build with all this stuff. We're going to do some testing. We're going to play with an MSI Meg. We're definitely going to test some PCIe Fortune 4 speeds that's gonna be awesome all of this stuff looking super forward thank you msi for making a little boy's dreams come true thanks so much so yeah we'll get to building a system in this and that's that's gonna be incredible come on follow me bring it with you
pretty dramatic little uh, <laughs> montage that went on there. I think that was a little warranted considering how amazing this system turned out. I mean, this red and black theme, you know, the level of parts that are used in this, it's one of the best computers I've ever built by far. One of the cleanest black gold trim on the motherboard and on the uh, on the, the case there, and uh, the red theme really worked out. We've got the uh, Cooler Master AIO where you can replace the little button on, on the, the, you know, the pump there, and we have an MSI Dragon on there that really makes it look good. Uh, all the lighting in there, you know, is what came with it. I did add one red LED strip just to kind of uh, you know focus some light uh, onto the motherboard and stuff it's, it's hidden in here so this is all part it's part of their play fast play cool theme going on with this and that is to have some of the fastest parts out there linked with some of the best technology for cooling to get you the you know maximum you know uh, gaming situation that you can get here with this build with their parts and uh, you know with this third generation horizon it's pretty awesome so with the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 3700X, 8 core, 16 threads, and uh, we've got the PCIe Gen 4. It's one of the fastest M.2 SSDs on the market in it. That's just super awesome. We're gonna do some speed test on that. And then we have an AIO, you know, that will keep everything cool. And this uh, twin, the Frozer technology on the um, chipset fan, which is a heat pipe that goes up and around and uh, actually connects to the VRM. So, uh, you know, we've got that heat distribution over some heat sinks as well as a chipset fan that only kicks on if uh, absolutely necessary. So there's, you know, zero noise coming from it unless let's say you had three M.2s in there and they were really hammering the chipset or something like that. And then the liquid cooling, which, you know, from Cooler Master allows us to, uh, you know, keep those boost clocks using precision boost and precision boost overdrive uh, up to its max. Or of course we have overclocking uh, ability on this motherboard. This is like the third best motherboard that MSI makes for the X570 chipset. And uh, it's got some auto overclocking features that I was surprised work pretty well as well. Uh, but uh, of course, with the 12 phase VRM on this thing, we should be able to max this chip out fairly well. We'll do a little bit of Cinebench testing and uh, some gaming testing in just a bit. So pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we got the Corsair Dominator 3200 megahertz RAM. This has got aluminum heat sinks on it and some really amazing lighting. I really like the way that looks. Of course, you can activate RGB mode on the all, all of this stuff using Mystic Light. And uh, you know, with the uh, the motherboard has that lighting, that little uh, you know holographic panel there, uh, and you can change all sorts of lighting modes. Pretty cool stuff. As far as the uh, video card is concerned, we have one of the first 57. I believe there's a 5700 XT version of this card, but uh, this is the 5700 version. And I was surprised to see that it only has one 8-pin connector, but in my testing, it does just as well as, uh, you know, the reference model with an 8 and a 6. So that's pretty interesting. And of course, it has a four heat pipe, uh, you know, design on it, uh, two Torx fans. That model is actually factory OC out of the box to get 50 megahertz faster game clock. It's able to, you know, push the 5700, uh, you know, a fair bit, which is pretty damn awesome. So powering all this, of course, is a V750 Gold Cooler Master power supply. It is fully modular. And of course, with, uh, you know, I don't need to have too many hard drives in there. It's nice to keep some of the cables off because there's only one VGA cable there that's required. Thanks to Cooler Master for getting, you know, this thing powered properly. We could put any video card in this and not have any issue or upgrade the processor with a 750 watt power supply and uh, it's been dead silent have it you know heard it at all so that's really awesome and then we got to circle back to this beautiful beautiful case it's the MPG Secura 500G and there's two 200 200 mil fans in the front here that are pushing air in and then of course we have one exhaust fan included and then uh, we got the Cooler Master AIO up here in a nice position and that's exiting the top panel. It's got tempered glass panels on both sides and enough cable management room that it was pretty easy even though I'm not the greatest with cable management of course to uh, make the back look just as nice as the well almost as nice as the front well, you know considering it's just some cables back there which is pretty cool. You know everything seems to work out really really nice uh, and it's been working great. I've been doing some testing and the you know if it performs as good as it looks 
we're going to be in a good uh, spot here, but I can tell you already, I've been playing with this uh, these parts for a while, and I know that this implementation with MSI is just going to make things even better. So let's go over here, and we'll uh, see if we can't test out just how well this thing performs. Well, okay, and we have to start off with some Cinebench scores, obviously. Want to check out what the CPU can do. This is running at stock speeds with the AIO. We see here we're staying at around 65 degrees, which is really respectable. If you had the stock cooler on there, it would be probably more like 70, 75 degrees while running a load like Cinebench R20. And I already ran the single core uh, benchmark, getting almost 500, 496, super respectable uh, you know, speeds for, for stock speeds, especially with an AIO cooler, it's working out very well. So we'll let that render up. Okay, so 4,709, very respectable for a multi-core score. Eight cores, 16 threads, doing real well, hanging around four gigahertz while it's running the test. If we jump over to Cinebench R15, if you're that's your kind of bag, those are the scores we're getting, 2,076 total score, and uh, that single core score, 200, very respectable. Now, if you are the kind of guy like me that likes to overclock, you might know that these are fairly uh, well known for hitting 4.3 gigahertz. And I got this really cool feature we're gonna check out here. If I open this up, and we go down and we check this out here. And we go down here and we see that there's this little almost like top hat. It looks like a guitar volume knob or something like that. Goes all the way up to 11 in true guitar fashion. But uh, if you want to enable this, this is actually auto overdrive or auto uh, overclocking. And we can set that down there. What It's uh, number six on the little meter there. And let's restart the computer and we'll see what happens when we go to six. We jump over into the BIOS, we can actually go up here and this is what the switch levels mean. And if we check out, we can see what this actually does compared to the base frequency. And level six is going to add 700 megahertz to the base frequency, which will land us at 4.3 gigahertz. Let's go ahead and restart and we'll see what kind of performance gains we get. All right, and now we are, if you check up up over here, running at 4.3 gigahertz on all cores during a Cinebench run. And it's a little toasty. We're running at 80 degrees while this is happening. So you definitely want to make sure you know what you're doing and you have an appropriate cooler for the CPU to do this type of thing. But look at that, 2249. We've increased our Cinebench score by 200 points. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty awesome. So like these overclocking features on this motherboard, it's a simple dial to get you up at a Cinebench stable 4.3 gigahertz. That's pretty cool in my book, but is it something you should do unless you kind of know what you're doing? Definitely be careful while you're using these types of features. And maybe I would dial this back to 4.25 gigahertz and it would be a little bit better for an all time overclock. On to some gaming and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, capabilities of this card. So this uh, actually runs at a game clock of uh, 1675, uh, it's overclocked over 1625 on the stock 5700. And we see it's actually running just a little bit above that, which is pretty good. And you see we're at 67 degrees and I've had this actually running for a take or two now. And uh, they actually stay around 70 degrees uh, at load with this card with the two Torx fans and the nice heatsink on it, the 5700. It's not the most power hungry card and it's actually running just fine considering it has a whole less power connector. So it's a fairly power efficient card, which I really like. But I wanted to show you some overclock settings. So MSI Afterburner will allow you to go to 10% power and uh, that's gonna give us a little increase, maybe uh, you know 10 megahertz or something like that. But now, watch this, I can actually bring this up to 1850, which is exactly the ma maximum that the MSI Afterburner or Wattman will allow you to overclock the card at stock. And uh, I was having real success running the card at 930 uh, on the memory clock, which is a lot better than uh, my, any of my reference cards were doing. So pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in. Now, if you're going to overclock it, the maximum that it's allowed, getting near 1800 megahertz, 
I would definitely suggest changing the fan curve because the stock fan curve is made more for silence over uh, you know the, the fans spinning up. But as you see, we're running at almost 1800 megahertz with all the sliders uh, on the core clock maxed out and uh, the power ma maxed out. So it's uh, you know pretty good overclocker even with uh, that six pin being removed. So I thought that was pretty good. But uh, for gaming, I found it best to leave it at 1800 and uh, the memory clock there will leave that at just, just for gaming sakes at 915. We're hovering around 1745 megahertz, so a pretty good little overclock there. And I think it's time now that it's all stable and I've checked it out, we'll go and play a little game at Apex Legends and just see how good of a gaming machine this is. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good at 1440p. All right, we're in Apex Legends. We're dropping from the dropship. We see here we have everything maxed out at 1440p, and we're getting a good 100 frames a second on the drop. And my pal Pathfinder and me, we're going to do some damage here. So let's uh, grab ourselves some guns. And yes, we see here 120 frames a second, hovering between 100 frames per second and 144. Great for a uh, high refresh rate monitor at 1440p. This is uh, really, really decent, that's for sure. The performance in this is fluid, smooth, and uh, we're doing really, really well. Let's go see if we can kill some enemies. down even in a firefight over 100 frames a second <laughs> yeah well we didn't win but we certainly won in the graphics department at uh, over 100 frames a second you can't ask for much more this is uh pretty much the great starting point the 5700 for high refresh rate this is 165 hertz panel but anything over 100 is really the starting point you want to get to for high refresh rate so it was super smooth smooth definitely awesome so let's jump over and test that Really fast NVMe drive now. I think that that will be fun. Alrighty, so let's test out this NVMe drive while we do a little outro here. So I've got some tests running up there. We are almost running 5,000 megabytes a second on Crystal Disk Mark. That is crazy. Blazing fast speed MP. Uh, 600 NVMe PCIe Gen 4, you know, and uh, I've got my NVMe drive up there that I use on my uh, video editing computer. It's like a, my digital SSD. It's like an Amazon special. I got it. It was known to be pretty fast back when Ryzen launched is when I got it. And we see here the speeds that, uh, you know, the variation here is pretty, pretty insane. So while we wait for that to finish up, I got to thank Cooler Master, I gotta thank Corsair, I gotta thank MSI, you know, and AMD Ryzen for uh, letting me be part of uh, this, especially MSI, MSI letting me be part of their Play Fast, Play Cool initiative, which shows that you can pair the awesomest parts with the parts that'll cool them. They'll cohesively work together to give you the highest gaming performance. It's pretty cool stuff. And, uh, you know, this is the best computer I've ever built. You know, um, <laughs> it's up there anyways, that's for sure. Wonderful case. The, uh, you know, uh, motherboard is awesome. The Meg a Ace, it's just got 12 phase VRM. It's got postcode. It's got, you know, uh, pretty you know, quick boot times uh, compared to some of the other X570 I played with. That's for sure. So that's awesome. Corsair Dominator memory. Of course, the PCIe uh, Gen 4 SSD. Cooler Master, Master Liquid ML240R here with some nice RGB lights that all syncs with the um, Mystic Light, you know, in the Dragon Center and stuff like that. And then this, uh, you know, 5700. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with how you can pretty much max out the overclock on it. It's pretty, pretty great so uh we're finished up here or pretty close almost 5,000 megabytes a second compared to 3,000 on uh my earlier gen ssd that's insane and then the write speed 4287 versus 3015 so we are you know there's some of the lower values the 4k and the random read and writes are a little bit closer together but for those raw you know big file read and write speeds that's going to be great for you know 4 and 8k video editing as a scratch drive or maybe you just want to have your games load the fastest or you know uh, you know have a lot of files to deal with and you want to make sure that things load fast i mean that's a pretty fast <laughs> NVMe drive, that's for sure. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. Gotta thank MSI for allowing me to be part 
of the Play Fast, Play Cool initiative. If you're in the market for any of these high-end PC parts, uh, give a you know warm recommendation to all of them. They've been great to work with, and uh, it's been a lot of fun to mess around with this computer and get her going and playing some video games, some Apex Legends, and some stuff like that. So I will see you guys in another video. Huge thanks to MSI. Check out the links in the description, and uh, I look forward to doing more stuff like this in the future. Uh, MSI has been great. And uh, thank you guys for watching, all 110,000 of you, because without you guys, I wouldn't get to mess around with cool stuff like this. And, uh, you know, thanks MSI for recognizing that. So I'll see you guys in another video.